You're listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hi there, Sprouts. Today is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord. I'm Sister Sydney Moss, a daughter of Mary Help of Christians, and this week we're talking about vocations. Today is the perfect day to talk about the vocation to religious life, because in a special way on the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, we pray for all men and women who have consecrated themselves to Him as priests, brothers, and sisters. Just like Jesus was presented to God and dedicated to His service, Men and women who are called to the religious life are set apart to serve God in a very special way with their whole lives. It was on this day 12 years ago that I was officially received into the Institute of the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians. But how did I get there? I'll give you the short version of the story. I had a very normal childhood. I went to a Catholic grade school from 1st to 8th grade and then to a public high school and a public university. As a child, I loved playing sports and being outside. I grew up on a street with all boys, so we would play tackle football, roller basketball, street hockey, I went skateboarding, rode my bike. I was outside every single day until the sun went down. In high school, I got very involved in the youth group at my parish. I was there at least three nights a week, and all the other nights, I was playing basketball or volleyball in high school. My junior year of high school, our youth group went on a mission trip to Mexico, and it was the first time in my life that my eyes were open to the reality of how so many people live. Even though the children had very little material things, they were so happy, and I decided I wanted their happiness. I wanted to stay there and help out forever, but I had to go back and finish school. That desire to go and serve people stayed with me for a very long time, and it wasn't until after college that I was able to do anything about it. After college, I moved to Washington, D.C., where I did a year-long volunteer program with the Franciscans. It was during my time in Washington that I met religious sisters for the first time ever. I didn't even know it was a possibility still to be a sister today because I had never met sisters. But the idea of being a sister was not too exciting to me. I had other plans for my life. Even though I was very attracted to who they were and what they did, I was very afraid of actually becoming a sister. But I would spend a lot of time with them on the weekends, at the parish. As much as I could, I was getting involved with the sisters, and that idea of becoming one of them wouldn't leave me alone. So eventually I started to visit some religious communities, But every time I went, it just didn't feel right. So I would tell God, well, I tried it, God. It must not be for me. This went on for a few years until the idea of going to another country to volunteer was very strong in my heart. I remembered back to my experience in high school and going to Mexico and what amazing experience that was. So I found a volunteer program that the Salesian sisters have called VIDAS. And I went to El Salvador for a year. But when I was there, I fell in love with the place. The people, the culture, the food, everything about it. I couldn't leave after a year. But the biggest reason I couldn't leave is because I told myself, I can't go home until I'm ready to make a decision about my vocation. So I stayed for a second year in El Salvador. And it was about eight months in where I finally, in my heart, felt like I can do this. If God is really calling me to be a religious sister, it is what I want to do. And you know one of the things that was the biggest sign for me was? It was the fact that on a Friday and Saturday night, I was completely happy watching the Disney Channel with the 30 girls who lived with us in the boarding school where I was. I didn't want to be anywhere else except with them watching the Disney Channel. I thought that was a pretty good sign that maybe God was calling me to give my life to the young. 
So I came back to the United States, and shortly after, I entered formation with the Daughters of Mary, Help of Christians. The beautiful thing about religious life is that God gives you a really long time to make sure it's the right decision. If you get married, you're probably going to be engaged to your spouse for maybe six months to a year before you get married. But as religious, we have three or four years of initial formation before we make our first vows. And then after making first vows, we have at least six years of living temporary vows before we make our perpetual vows. That's nine or ten years before you make your final I do. Because as a consecrated religious, I am a bride of Christ. I am married. Religious sisters who wear a habit are wearing their wedding dress every day. It's a sign that I am a bride of Christ. Wow, how many times does your mom get to wear her wedding dress after the big day? Consecrated religious live in community and take three vows, poverty, chastity, and obedience. Sometimes it seems like those would be really hard to live, but actually they're very freeing. These vows allow us to live more like Christ and to completely depend on Him for everything that we need. As you get older and start to discern what God is calling you to do with your life, stay open to the possibility that He may be calling you to consecrate your life to Him. Do you know any religious brothers or sisters? If there's some in your parish, take the time to get to know them. Ask them their vocation story. How did they know that God was calling them to be a brother or a sister? And if you're afraid that God may be calling you to be a priest, brother, or sister, do not be afraid. How many times does Jesus tell us that? Do not be afraid. I once heard a priest put it this way. If God did not first put Africa in your heart, he won't ever send you to Africa. In other words, if God did not create you to be a priest, brother, or sister— He's not going to ask you to do that because God wants us to be happier than we want ourselves to be happy. He made us to do something amazing and he's not out to make us miserable. He wants to see us happy and successful and filled with life. So trust that God has a plan for you and be open to the fact that he might just call some of you to the priesthood or religious life. So today, in a special way, say a little prayer for all of us who have consecrated our lives to Christ as religious brothers and sisters. And let's pray that more men and women would say yes to God's call to totally give their lives in His service. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hi there, parents. It is a blessing to be with you this week. As Daughters of Mary, Help of Christians, our primary goal is to accompany the young and their families as they journey to heaven. For more information about our sisters and for a discernment program we have for young women called the Fiat Project, check out the links in the show notes. The Fiat Project was an OSV Challenge finalist, a contest designed to accelerate project ideas that will make a profound impact on the Catholic Church and the world. We are very grateful to have had that experience and to also join you this week on Catholic Sprouts. Many blessings. This show is a production of the Spoke Street Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.